What's up everyone? So as part of today's series, we're going to be looking back at some uh, past bills that I had, uh, mainly on the Acura EL. So the title is not L, it's actually EL for my EL build. I know a lot of people in the States find this car very fascinating because uh, you guys don't have it, right? So a lot of people take the front end, you know, you put it on hatchbacks or whatever and they end up loving it. But for me, I had just the original Acura EL uh, 1997. Uh, but before we get into that, we're actually going to have a look at even a previous build to that. And actually, I won't even call it a build. I actually just bought the car the way it is. It's a 95 Acura Integra. So it was pretty much all riced out, as you can see in the picture. And I grew up uh, around this car. It's actually my cousin's car. So when I got picked up as, a, I think, maybe maybe 11 or 12 years old, I would get picked up by my cousin in this. You know, At that time, it was the coolest thing around. So. When I did get my license, the first car I wanted to buy was this Integra, and it, it was my first uh, buy. I'm just gonna have a quick video, and uh, you can check out just how ricey it was. pretty much the day I bought the EL and I'll talk about that right now actually. I sold the Integra maybe I don't know sometime between noon and four. I believe the guy came up just before he finished work. Bought the Integra and I'm driving down Bristol which is a street back in my home area and I saw this EL just as it is in this picture. Nothing fancy about it. Lowered with some 17 inch RTX rims. I went up to the guy and it happened to be someone that I know from high school named Jude, the same guy who was running that shop, Komodo Motorsports, that I took my car out last week to get detailed. So I asked him, would he sell the car to me? And he just so happened to be selling the car, or at least wanting to sell the car at that time. And of course, I just sold my Integra, so I had the money ready. We went to square one and signed for that paper right then and there. No inspection, nothing. You know, 17 years old, you see a car that you like and you just buy it. So that's how I bought the car. And I believe uh, either the same week or weekend, my friend had, uh, his mom actually had an older Civic, which she took the spoiler off. So I ended up taking that spoiler, throwing it on the EL. And then I have my, uh, you know, that's my first mod for the EL, it was a rear wing. Now, of course, it's not fast or anything, but of course, it, it looked great. And it even had the, uh, the, the legit OEM Civic embedded under the, on the underside of the sport. So yeah, that's the uh, first mod at least I did to the car, was that. Uh, I quickly started doing other rapid mods, which were more ricey. You know, at that time, it was kind of in style. So one of the next mods I did was the seats, Throw some audio in there, have the Alpine deck. I also had the Rockford Fosgate, I think it was a four channel or a two channel, I can't even remember the amp. And of course, everyone back then connected their deck through the iPod. And at that time, having an 80 gig iPod was a big thing. Uh, of course, you had unlimited space to do whatever you wanted and you can store as much music. And of course, you didn't have to go through a whole bunch of CDs or anything at that time. After the audio and gas were finished, I went more onto the look side. I ended up getting this Mugen front lip and I also did the eyelids on the headlight. Uh, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't tell with the lights, but those are the next mods that I went with for the EL. By the way, this is, uh, if, you're not, if you don't know, the EL is actually uh, D16, so it's a single cam stock, just like the Civics are. It's pretty much an accurate version of the Civic. So this is how the front lip looked after everything was finished. 
I ended up taking some black vinyl and going over the embers and made it look a bit more aggressive. Uh, blacked out the emblem on the grill and just sanded down and sprayed, spray canned actually, the hood to make it look matte. It looked a bit better. I also bought these M3 type uh, rear view mirrors, you can see it in this picture. So at this point, I guess the car looked and performed how I thought it should. But quickly one day on the way back home, uh, I think I was on the 410 getting onto the 401, the car ended up uh, giving me an oil light and then just stopped. So I got it towed to my school. I was actually really close with my auto teacher. I think even up to yesterday, I believe he still comments and likes all my pictures and videos I post. He's a pretty funny guy. He loves Ford. I think on every every test we had, the last question would be, what is the best car manufacturer? And it's a bonus question. If you wanted to get that bonus mark, you had to put Ford. So pretty good way to make you like Ford, or at least make you admit to it being the best manufacturer. Anyway, so after having a look at the engine at my high school, we found out that it is blown, the crank would not turn, and I know I still have a piece of that engine in my garage until now. I think it was a connecting rod that came to the side. still have a piece of that. I just kept it as a souvenir, first blown engine. But uh, yeah, on the side of the uh, EO, I ended up going to the Jade in engine shop and buying a GSR P18C. Uh, uh, this is the exact picture of it. and. Uh, this is the picture of it, I think the day I got it swapped in. I do not think the power steering was connected yet. I was in a rush to drive the car. The guy let me take it for the weekend and then bring it back to the shop on Monday to get completed. And of course, the faster the car goes, you know, being a young driver, uh, I would definitely give it all I can. And I think I pushed our car every chance I got, every delight, every street I went on. I was never just baby babying the car, never grand shifting, always going and if you always want to drive fast and you're not an experienced driver, this is what's going to happen to you. Uh, of course, it was heartbreaking number one and this, is, this pretty much marks the point where the EL pretty much went down. Um, it was never going to be the same build and it was definitely never going to drive the same or I would probably not even like it as much because of how it went of how it looked and how quickly it progressed and then it quickly went down. So, uh, this is the accident photo from it. Uh, the rims, the rims are really bad. And here we started uh, putting it back together, I guess. My uncle owns a fiberglass shop, so I got the front bumper from him for a reasonable cost. At that time, I was not making any type of money to build this car back how I would really want to. So I pretty much pieced together what we could and made a build out of it just to bring it back on the road. I know this accident happened in August or the end of August. I was just trying to uh, get it back before winter, right? So we ended up you know, putting this ridiculous bumper on it, which is fine. We got some new rims, of course I had to. And yeah, I got this another ridiculous rear bumper, but at least as you see, the car is on the road and it wasn't in time for winter. But after this winter, or during this winter, I actually went down to Florida for a vacation and a cousin drove a RSX Type S and my other cousin drove a TSX, like the 08 A-Spec, I believe. Those cars made the EL uh, pretty much seem like it was a wreck. I mean, you have the K-Series, K-Series gearbox, the hydraulic clutch, everything about those cars um, really made this car seem like I should give up on it. So when I came back, uh, one of the first things I did was replace the front bumper and replace the rear bumper. Uh, at least it looks a bit more clean like this. Yeah, there you go. At least it looks a bit more clean like this. And I think at this point was the, uh, the final uh, I'd say not the final, but at this point is where I got the car looking a little great again, and that was it. Uh, I wasn't going to put any more effort into this build, especially because I fell in love with the TSX and RSX when I went to Florida. 
I was already in the mind, already starting looking, starting to look at uh, TSX. So I did find one, of course, it's not that hard to find a TSX. Uh, it's already been out for five years at that time. So here we are, bought the TSX and I don't think I drove the EL back after that. You know, it came off insurance. I uh, didn't renew the tags or anything like that. The, the TSX became my primary car and the EL just sat on the driveway for about maybe four or five months before it got parted out, engine, rims. Uh, I don't think I sold the seats. I think they just went to scrap with the car. Uh, the trunk was also sold. And yeah, that's pretty much how the EL uh, went. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, quick rant, I guess, about the EL. Very short video, very memorable car, but it does go down in the books as my first actual build. And yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget it. It was pretty good. I mean, I did a lot of street racing back then, so it was an amazing street car. I remember I didn't even have my license. I got pulled over or whatever, but I would say it's all in the past over 10 years ago and yeah thanks for watching this video